Hi, Taylor Marshall here. Today we're going to tackle head-on probably the most controversial topic with regard to Thomas Aquinas and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and that is how Thomas Aquinas denied the Immaculate Conception in the Summa Theologiae. As you know, the Immaculate Conception is the dogma defined by Pope Pius IX in the 1800s, stating and defining that the Blessed Virgin Mary was without all sin, including original sin, from the first moment of her conception. From the first moment of her conception, she was totally pure. And the reason for that is that it was fitting because her son, Jesus Christ, is the eternal Son of God. And so God created one person, one woman, to be a pure vessel so that his son will be born into this world of a pure virgin, completely sinless, completely full of grace. And before we get into Thomas Aquinas and his thoughts on the Immaculate Conception, let's just take a moment and look at what the Bible says about the Immaculate Conception, what the Church Fathers say about the Immaculate Conception, and then we'll look a little bit at the medieval controversy, and then we'll look at Thomas Aquinas' words. So in Scripture, the best place to go is Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And this is when the angel Gabriel comes and he visits the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. The very opening lines of the Hail Mary that we pray in the Rosary, it's right there in Scripture. And that term there, full of grace, sometimes in Protestant translations, it's translated uh, wrongly or with a little less impact as highly favored one. And that's not quite accurate because the Greek word there is kakeratomene, kakeratomene. And that is a perfect past participle. And the verb there means being graced, being graced. And the nature of the grammar there, we won't go into all the Greek here, but the nature of the grammar indicates that this is a past event, perfect past event, continuing into the present reality. So Mary's being graced, her being full of grace, goes perfectly into the past all the way to the present moment. So she is full of grace for her entire life. And this indicates that she had the Immaculate Conception, or rather she is the Immaculate Conception because she is full of grace. Now, the Church Fathers oft, often speak about Our Lady as well as being all pure, all holy, and even without the stain of sin. And I'd like to look at some of those quotes, some of the earliest ones and some of the most powerful ones, just so you get a feel for what the Church Fathers were saying. And we'll include all these quotes and more down below this video in the notes. The first one comes from St. Hippolytus. And he's writing in the 200s. In fact, AD 235 is, is the approximate date for this quote. And he writes concerning Christ, he was the ark formed of incorruptible wood. For by this is signified that his tabernacle was exempt from corruption. Also, Origen writes, this virgin mother of the only begotten of God is called Mary, worthy of God immaculate of the immaculate, one of the one. So Christ, of course, is immaculate. And immaculate in Latin, by the way, means without stain. A macula is a stain. So if I had a stain here, in Latin, I would call it a macula. So immaculate means without stain, pure. So Christ is immaculate and Mary is immaculate. Also, St. Ephraim, the Syrian, and the Syrian church, speaking to Christ, says, Thou alone and thy mother are in all things fair. There is no flaw in thee and no stain in thy mother. St. Ambrose of Milan writes, Mary, a virgin not only undefiled, but a virgin whom grace has made inviolate, free from every stain of sin. And then most famously this quote from St. Augustine in his work the, on nature and grace, and this is about A.D. 415. Augustine writing says, quote, We must exempt the Holy Virgin Mary concerning whom I wish to raise no question when it touches to the subject of sins out of honor to our Lord. So I think you can see there that in the early church, there was a widespread notion in the Eastern church and in the Western church 
that Mary was exempt from the stain which comes from Adam and Eve, original sin. She was sinless. Now, as we move into the medieval era, a debate sort of comes up to the surface, and the debate is really not so much about the Immaculate Conception, but how is it that Christ is the Redeemer or the Savior of the Blessed Virgin Mary? So we know that Christ is the Savior of all mankind, including the Blessed Virgin Mary. So if he's the Savior of the Virgin Mary, therefore he must be saving her from something. And yet, the Virgin Mary doesn't have any sin. So they posit that when the Blessed Virgin Mary was conceived in her mother's womb, in St. Anne's womb, she had original sin for just a little bit, just a few moments, and then the Holy Spirit, by a miraculous uh, sanctification, took away that stain of sin, and she was preserved all the way in the womb, through her birth, and her entire life without sin. And that way, Christ redeemed her from sin, because she had sinned for just a few moments. Right? And we see this in, for example, St. Bernard of Clairvaux in the Dominican tradition, also in the early Franciscan tradition. Um, St. Bonaventure, a doctor of the church, also seems to hold this position, that she had original sin for just a little bit, and then it was taken away. This is also the position of Thomas Aquinas in the Summa Theologiae. The solution to this problem really came forward and was popularized by Blessed John Duns Scotus, also just called colloquially Scotus. After the death of Thomas Aquinas, moving into the 1300s and the 1400s, Scotus becomes the Franciscan powerhouse for uh, Franciscan Catholic theology. And a rivalry, a rivalry exists to this day between Dominicans, favoring Thomas Aquinas, and Franciscans, favoring Scotus, and a lot of it has to do with this question. And Scotus said, you know, if it is fitting that the Blessed Virgin Mary be exempt from all original sin, and God has the power to do it, well then he just did it. And the way we solve Mary being redeemed is we say, well, most people have original sin and sin, and therefore the blood of Christ redeems them. But in the case of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she would have acquired the stain of original sin from her parents, but God intervened and prevented it at that moment so she never had it. So the, the great analogy for this is most of us are, picture a giant pool and it's full of mud and all of us are in there so we're all, have our clothes stained, we're all in the pool. Um, and from conception through life we have original sin and sin, but in the case of the Blessed Virgin Mary it's almost like she was falling into the pool and but before she fell into the muck she was preserved, all right? And that, that position became popular, it became widespread, it really rescued the early church's patristic consensus on the purity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it provided a theological solution to a perceived theological problem. So with all that said, that's the history and the theology of the Immaculate Conception. And let's take a look at Thomas Aquinas in his own words. Uh, I was reading Father Reginald Gary Lagrange. He's my favorite Thomistic scholar of the 1900s. He's an absolutely brilliant man, and I recommend that you look at his commentaries on Thomas Aquinas. Uh, he's also a very holy man, and he's written a lot of great books on spiritual theology, how to grow closer to God through prayer, the sacraments, penance. He's also written a lot on the Carmelite spirituality. So, uh, Father uh, Reginald Gary Gou Lagrange. And he finds in Thomas Aquinas' thinking on the Blessed Virgin Mary three stages. The first stage is the early stage, and it's prior to the year 1254. And in this time period, Thomas is writing his commentary on the sentences of Peter Lombard. And during this period, Thomas Aquinas affirms the Immaculate Conception, what came to be known as Immaculate Conception, Thomas Aquinas affirms it. And here's the quote. This is from his commentary on Peter Lombard's Sentences, uh, the first book, Distinction 44. And again, we'll put all of these in the notes below the video so that you have access to them. But he writes, 
Such was the purity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was exempt from both original and actual sin. So early in Thomas's theological career, he explicitly writes that she was exempt from original sin. That's noteworthy. Then we move into the second period of Thomas's theological analysis on this topic. And this is from 1254 to 1272 about. This is the time period in which the Summa Theologiae falls in. So this time period. And we read here, the Blessed Virgin did indeed contract original sin. He says that. Again, quoting Thomas, the Blessed Virgin did indeed contract original sin. That's in the Summa Theologiae, uh, part 3, question 27, article 2, response to um, objection 2. Again, we'll put that in the notes below. But then, Father Gary Lagrange identifies a very late third period. This is after the year 1272. And here, this is an, um, a sermon or an exposition on the Hail Mary. So it's, it's basically a sermon from the pulpit or an exhortation to the friars. And here we read, For she, the Blessed Virgin, was most pure because she incurred the stain neither of original sin, nor of mortal sin, nor of venial sin. So that's at the very end in a homily. Now, a disclaimer here, uh, many scholars debate whether this text is authentic. There are a few variations of this text, some of which have that exact wording, some which don't. So it is still a toss-up. Um, deep in my heart, I, I hope that towards the end of his life, he did sort of have a revelation and come back to his earliest position he had as a younger theologian that Mary was exempt from original sin. But it's as clear as day if you read the Summa Theologiae, which we spend most of our time studying here at the New St. Thomas Institute, he does, in fact, deny it. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you'll take time also to read all the notes and resources below this video and the other videos. I think you'll find it very helpful. And uh, again, continue to enjoy the videos and go into the forum and continue to talk and debate this topic. Thanks so much. God bless.